Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay, welcome. Uh, thank you for coming. So I'm happy to introduce Guang Gong to you today. Guang is a professor at the University of Waterloo. She's the director of the Communication Security Lab and also of the uh, Center for Applied Cryptographic Research. Um, so her research interests are broad. They span uh, theory, so information theory and combinatorics, um, all the way to very practical research, um, network security and communication security. And today I think uh, the topic is in the, the more practical side. Um, so with that, I'll let you start. OK, thank you. Thank you, Greg, for the introduction. And thank you, Peter, for the hosting. So today, I, uh, I would like to introduce some work we did in University of Waterloo. Uh, so the title is uh, Securing RFID System Using That with uh, Stream Cipher. Uh -huh. So first, I think I will spend uh, some time uh, give an introduction to RFID and, uh, uh, and uh, how the restrict uh, in the RFID systems. Then I will give the uh, uh, review for the net with cryptographic solution for the RFID security. Then we will introduce our own uh, solutions. So we were using the stream cipher and, uh, and show how we can provide the privacy uh, preserving authentication for the RFID systems. Then I will show you some related uh, research activities which conducted in the University of Wharton, especially in the communication security lab. So what is RFID? So it's short as the radio frequency identification. I believe first people then when they introduced this, uh, I, I met this guy in a conference and he told me our idea is to try to give ID to every, uh, every items in the universe. <laughs> so that's why they got the, uh, so every object will have the ID, but this ID will be using the uh, radio frequency. Okay, so the, currently this uh, RFID technology developed very fast, uh, basically is one of the most per, uh, permissive technology to enable ubiquitous and, uh, the, per, uh, per, uh, and the Internet of Things computation. So oh, you all, possibly you already seen some of those, uh, those uh, uh, texts. Uh, However, currently it's not RFID yet. If, the, if that's RFID tech, that will cause the problem. So that's why the research always uh, should be a few year, years before those technologies really deployed, like in uh, the department store or like Walmart, those uh, store which sell the very uh, inexpensive things. Uh -huh. And how it works? So basically, the, the RFID contains the three components. So the, those RFID tags, so each of those tags consists of a microchip attached to the radio antenna. Uh, then they will have the reader. So reader usually is the device which can emit the radio waves and receive uh, signals back from the uh, tag. Then the communication between a reader and the database, so this is a wired network. So usually we will assume this part is secured. So the only part is the wireless part. So which means the communication between tag and the reader. So this is the only part we think it's uh, uh, currently in standard is they didn't mention how they can secure those parts. However, this part will be secured like the, they could implement the uh, SSL, secure socket layer. So this is usually a something, okay. 
And the, for the uh, characteristic of the alpha uh, RFID system, uh, so I already mentioned the so channel between the reader and the backend database might be wired channels that are usually assumed uh, to be secure. Uh, also, uh, both the reader and the backend server can implement the uh, crypto algorithms and the strong crypto protocols. So this is also the reason we can assume uh, this link uh, is secure. So the, the weakness link is the wireless link uh, between the reader and the tag. So usually the tag is uh, are constrained devices. So they constrained in every aspect of the computing and the communication and the storage. Uh, the, the reason is uh, uh, they ask so little. For example, some company when they approach us, uh, they said, okay, we want you have some design for our uh, RFID product. And then they said our tag only sell for the 10 cents. They only give you one cent for security design. Then I said, no way. One cent for security, then we cannot do anything. So that's the reason, because this cost tag itself is so cheap. Then you also want the security. Then how, how they can distribute. So they distribute only for one cent. <laughs> yeah, so that, I, I, I believe that's the challenge part. Uh -huh. Okay, so for the different RFT tags, they divided into the three different uh, tags. So one class, I'm sorry, uh, one class is the active tags and the semi-passive and the passive ones. So active tags, basically they have battery. So this one can treat it as a general wireless device. Okay, so they can init uh, initialize the communication, but those are very expensive. Uh, then transmission range also very high. And the second class is semi-passive tag. So for those tags, they have battery. However, uh, this battery only used for run chips circuit. Uh, the, for the communication, they have to harvest the power from reader signal. So those are also expensive, but uh, uh, the, uh, not as uh, expensive as these ones. And the third class, this is the class people are very interested because those are the passive tags. So those passive tags basically no battery inside. So if no battery basically eliminate maintenance for those devices because they do not have battery. So how they can do the computing and the communication, they harvest the power from the signal sending from the reader. So that's the, uh, also the reason they are, uh, <laughs> so the, uh, the, they cannot implement the strong crypto. So for these two classes, uh, so they weak in computing, uh, but can be operated in a large range. So this class called the EPC tags, this is a class I will focus on. And the second class is they could perform intensive com computation in near proximity. For example, like those quartica, you you very close to the reader, just one centimeter. So in this way, they can grab the power strongly. So they can do even can do the elliptic curve cryptography for those uh, uh, they call the near field uh, communication. For example, currently for the cell phone, like the uh, Google. Uh, Samsung implement, uh, implemented the Google's Kwan, uh, uh, those Google phone, then they, they have that uh, uh, near field communication mode. And the BlackBerry also have the, uh, this mode already implemented. But I think the iPhone didn't, uh, even iPhone 5. Windows Phone 8 does. Yeah, yeah, Windows Phone 8 that does have this near field mode. So which means you can switch your phone as a reader, also switch your phone your, as your credit card. So you can do both. So this is, uh, but those are very cheap and smaller, and the uh, distance is short. So the, uh, so possibly you already see some of those uh, products. Mm -hmm. Do the EPC tags have any long-term storage? Yes, 
Uh, no, long term so communication uh, distance. Like they can go maybe uh, one meter to five meters. Like those, uh, uh, like the warmers, those uh, different uh, places, the reader could be a little bit far away. They can still read their uh, product. Yeah. Uh, but the NFC is uh, one centimeter. You have to close by. Yeah. Uh -huh. So for the uh, so this graph shows if that the uh, active ones they have a battery for both communication and the uh, and the computing, and for the semi passive ones they have battery, but those only for power up the uh, the tag. Uh, cannot do the communication. So the power for communication also harvest from the reader signal. And the, for the passive one, do not have battery. So whatever they power up or do the communication, all get the power, power from the signal sending from the reader. So this is uh, uh, three type. And the, for, the dis, uh, for the radio frequency, then we class, uh, look at this uh, classification. For the low frequency attacks, so the read, uh, frequency range is 125 to 134 kilohertz. Reading range could be the 10 centimeters. Uh, uh, like, uh, the application like that's smart cars and the ticketing, and also those like the luxury cars, those uh, kinis entry. So those are also uh, within uh, this uh, category. And the, the other two classes are high frequency tags now. So this class operating on the 13.56 megahertz, and this class operated on the 866 to 915 megahertz. And the distance also, also increased. So question? Did you get a, this number like seven meters, or did somebody write 20 feet in Because it's spurious precision. I'm sure if it works six meters, it works at eight meters too, right? The inverse square is inverse square the world around. And those are taken from standard. So I don't know how they measured, but they specified uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the different uh, frequency range what the distance could, uh, they could reach. But I, I, I do not know if, uh, uh, because those uh, uh, currently is all, all those are the research area. They not really manufactured, but this type is already in the application. So all of the new field uh, communication NFC tags is already uh, there. So so this is uh, the different uh, RFID tags. Uh -huh. So uh, and uh, in this talk, I will focus on the EPC tag. So, because this is the, the class currently uh, in the standard, they didn't specify any uh, security. I think they are waiting for the, they got a problem, then they come to uh, uh, rescue their product. Uh, for the NFC tags, so this is uh, the expecting, uh, they have a capability to implement the public key especially the, like the elliptic curve uh, public key. So this is also in the standard, and in the NFC standard. So they said they could do the public key. So like those uh, chip car, so later on possible, because right now your key is embedded when you have the AES uh, there, so the key is embedded, so possibly later on could also can be shared the key, then using the public key approach. And for the EPC tag, so this is the, so this, uh, they call the EPC Global Class Generation 2, uh, shortened as the EPC Gen 2. Uh, this, this was proved by ISO uh, 18000 uh, 6C, so this uh, in July 2006. However, this is a class people think possibly later on uh, will be widely uh, deployed. So in this standard, what they specified? So they specified uh, four types of memory in EPC text. So first class is re re reserved memory. So those for store the password, which has 32 bit. Uh, however, those passwords here basically is 
for the key of the tag. For example, tail, a tag not working well. They do not, other people could also, other reader could read the information from this tag. So they issue the command, kill this tag. So this is not really a password we use for access the computer or the servers, not the one. And the uh, 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 EPC, that's called the category is EPC memory. So this is contains the 96 bit. Uh, so this part uh, used for identify the tag. However, this memory is locked. So you only can read out. You cannot write. Okay, so although they, they said that you can have 96 bit, I'm, I'm sorry. And uh, uh, another, that's the TID memory, and this is 64 bit, then this is the part you uh, uh, for store the information that can identify the tag. Also, you, you could be, uh, uh, this can be used, this 64 bit. Uh, another is the uh, user memory. This is optional uh, memory. Uh, so most of the tag, I think in the market, they do not have uh, this one uh, there yet. And uh, uh, also for the communications uh, and the EPC standard also specified uh, a restricted number of the uh, command. Uh, which is the basic functionality of the RFID enabled application. So the command select, this command is used by the reader to select a subset of tag population. And the second command is the inventory. So these commands are used to establish communications between different tags and the reader. And the third class command is the access control command. So those uh, you can have the uh, f uh, five different things. So this is request to tag to return 16-bit random number. So this is one restriction. Any communication between reader and the tag is 16-bit. So that's why when, if you want to use AES, then you have to run AES once. You get 128-bit. Then you need to throw away others. If you use ECC, for example, your field, the smallest one, 160 bit, then you get the number is 160 bit, but you only can use 16. So this is what the restriction they have there. Now, of course, you can read the memory on the tag. Right is right to the memory on the tag and the key. This is what the security function they space. They said the security is means this kill command. So you can no longer can read the tag, so they call the secure. And this is permanently disable the tag, and the knock is knock the memory. So that's the two functions uh, they call the security function in the RFID tag. So you could knock, you could also kill the tag. So, sorry, the huh? request RN respond the same random number every time, or? No, different. So which means communications only, each time only transmit 16 bits. Okay. That's it. That's a restriction. Uh -huh. Okay. And the attacks, uh, attacks, uh, it's, uh, uh, I think it's uh, all general attack which op can apply to wireless communication also apply to here. And here also has uh, some special uh, concern. For example, uh, uh, RFID technology, uh, this is two main privacy concern for users. One is the, like the canon, uh, canon uh, those physical tracking of tax and the inventory of tax. Okay. And uh, also uh, behavior readers can harvest the information from the well-behaved RFID tax. So those are the invade the, uh, the privacy. Um, so, oh, because of between the communication, uh, the communication between RFID tag and the RFID reader uh, is a RFID tag, uh, RFID reader basically is uh, sending the command continuously. Uh -huh. So the tag 
will automatically respond to the uh, interrogation from the reader without alerting the uh, owner. So basically, you do not know your, your device replying. OK, so that's, uh, the, that's the uh, part. So the person carrying on a RFID tag is prone to uh, uh, known physical tracking. So this is uh, the, I, I think, uh, uh, from this uh, uh, behavior, adversary, which equipped with the uh, RFID readers, uh, can effectively trace a person carrying on tagged item by linking different uh, uh, sightings of the same RFID tag. For example, if like the uh, uh, any like the Macy or the department store, then if you buy something and someone wants to check you, then you they can build the reader. So currently, you can s s spend possibly I think two hundred US dollar, then you can you can build the reader then they can read what you, you purchased. So, so that I, I think uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, that's something a little bit scaring. If someone wants to you know your behavior, spending behavior, they could. Also, cost not that high. I think five years ago, if someone wants to build a reader, it cost more than $2,000. But now, only $200 you can build the one. And I, I think here has a store called the Fries. Then you go there, you, you only need to spend it about $200. Question? It, 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 when it comes to carrying a tag, if I know what the RFID is, I might be able to break it with a hammer. But what I really worry about is a thing like mail order. There's a packet on my doorstep, and every single person can figure out something about, about, about what I'm buying yes. before, without opening, even without getting too near my house. No, 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 no. You said seven meters. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, that's a pavement, that's a sidewalk. Yeah, they can just stand on your sidewalk. You sidewalk and say, oh, this guy has been buying pornographic magazines. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's why if the RFID technology really deployed, I think the privacy issue that's the f force they need to, to solve. Otherwise, people will get uh, tracked anywhere. If someone wants to know what you buy or your uh, knife be behavior, then they can. Also, the cost is so little for those, uh, those hikers, right? 200 is just nothing for, the, for their spending, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, also, those, those for the uh, those, uh, industry partners for, in supply chain applications, uh, so individual tech the object in stores allow competitors to learn about stock turnover rates, like those inventory. So those, those are not ordinary people, but uh, this is more serious. Also those are pharmacy chains. Uh -huh. So this is also uh, another. And uh, uh, a second problem is uh, authentication. Uh -huh. So authentication is focused on the problem of where behavior the readers is receiving information from the misbehaving tag, like those uh, counterfeit tags. So for example, uh, I think, uh, I believe this problem is more serious in, in China. If some brand is very good and everyone made that uh, brand, and then they just, uh, just uh, forged a uh, valid tag. Yeah, so this is uh, how, how you can check your, your tag is valid, then the definitely crypto problem is you do the authentication to check this tag is valid tag or not. Okay, so this is a basic RFID. For example, for the EPC tag, are uh, vulnerable to simple counterfeiting attack uh, or colonial attacks. Okay, so the attacker can skim the electronic product code from the uh, a target tag and then program it to a counterfeit tag. So this is much easier now. Before that, uh, uh, they made some uh, the tag, then you need to manually do many things. But if it's electronic way, then you just need to grab the information, then you can produce another new ones. Okay. So uh, authentication basically is an important issue when the RFID tags are used for access control or as uh, security devices to detect, uh, detect counterfeit uh, uh, products such as medicines, uh, electronic accessories, and high-valued items. Okay. 
Uh, so this is uh, the the uh, I think uh, uh, in general people if you uh, re uh, raise this problem then people will think you can solve by uh, implementing the crypto. So the main problem is uh, the, those uh, very cheap uh, RFID tag they cannot implement the cryptos. So for the communication attack as I mentioned uh, any attack which apply to the wireless communications also apply to here. So like the spoofing and the relay, eavesdropping and jamming and the traffic analysis. So those is general for any wireless device because the communication between tech and the reader uh, is a wireless uh, part. So all of those uh, attack uh, apply to here. Mm -hmm. And the countermeasure, so this is the, they were thinking uh, in the standard then because they have those countermeasures, so they think uh, 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 that will be okay. So physical protection, so they could, uh, uh, could have some distance measurement. For example, uh, if that's the signal comes from the, uh, 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 the, the distance is not your measured, they could suspect has some uh, 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 misbehaved the reader is trying to read some information, or they, they call it the Faraday cage approach, so which means that you put your tag into some, some cage. But I think those for the, uh, not for the uh, civilian application, those are only uh, applicable for the government or, or uh, military applications. Then the, uh, then the second functionality is the deactivity, uh, deactivation. So you could have the killing operator, sleeping operator, or hash lock. Question? This government, but uh, enhanced driver's driver license in Washington State yeah. related to the Faraday cage, so people can't read unless you unless you take it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, I think the password, like the U.S. password, uh, then they will have the RFID. That one does not have the uh, the uh, the cage implemented. Yeah, uh -huh. Faraday cage implemented. And uh, or could be uh, renaming and uh, uh, user oriented. So that's what they were thinking is uh, uh, that with uh, crypto based approaches. So this is what uh, I will uh, introduce. Or using the watchdog uh, tag or RFID guarding. So those are similar approach as a uh, parody KG. And for the Jimmy, so. So Jimmy is a, a, a currently is a very serious attack. So basically, it's no much a good method. Uh, uh, the, if you want to block in those uh, jamming signal, then you have to introduce another type of communication called the spread spectrum communication. But if you introduce spread spectrum communication, then the tag cannot do this. So that's why uh, uh, there's no much solution here yet. And the identity authentication, then this, uh, so those basically should be using a cryptographic approach. Uh -huh. So that's I will show you later, well, which is reported in the literature. So for the uh, identification and uh, uh, authentication, so the identification protocol in the standard, they combined, they called it the privacy preserving uh, authentication. Um, but that's divided into two steps. First is uh, do the identification. So identification protocol allows the reader to obtain the identity of a uh, queried tag, but no proof is required. So that's, uh, uh, so you, you, you just uh, query the tag, and the tag reply with his ID. So this is currently in the standard. No security at all. Uh -huh. uh, so basically, once the reader got to query once, then the everyone, uh, for the attacker, he gets all ideas. So they tell him what, whatever she wants to do, he can use in those uh, uh, information of the ID. Okay, so uh, currently, uh, has, uh, like those uh, application localization and the stock management, so those need identification uh, uh, information. 
and the authentication. So uh, this is uh, 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 the same as uh, general uh, communications, so the, which allow the reader to be convinced of the identity of acquired data, uh, uh, acquired uh, uh, tag. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, also are now tech to be convinced of the identity of the query reader. Uh, so usually if that's too satisfied, that's a mutual authentication. So in this sense, uh, then if that's a symmetric key approach, then they both should share the key. So this is also oh, the, uh, the case for the symmetric key-based approach. So we know for the authentication from the cryptographic approach, you use Mac, then it's a symmetric key approach. Then you both parties should share the key, or you use the public key using the digital signature to create the uh, uh, response. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, that's the UU authentication protocol. So example, including those access control, uh, e-document, uh, and anti-colon, and anti-counterfeiting. Uh, so those uh, it's guaranteed by the authentication. Okay, so for, for the performance requirement, uh, uh, then you need uh, no computer, uh, uh, computation cost, uh, uh, and uh, also the no communication cost, uh, and the no storage requirement, uh, and the, the scannability. So back and the database should be able to efficiently identify a individual tag, even though the tag population is huge. So all of those is uh, restricted. Uh, so that's the reason in the standard they didn't want to specify the security part. Because everything is uh, constrained, the uh, limited power and the limited bandwidth and the memory also extremely constrained. So, and the, the, for the cryptographic uh, solutions, uh, um, what is the design goal? For implementing the security mechanisms on resource constrained uh, smart devices, uh, like RFID tags, uh, so this is what we needed to consider. So three performance attributes, the size of the implementation as measured by gate equivalent, the peak and the average power consumption, the time required to complete a computation. So what is the available on the RFID tag? So this is a Depends on the security level, intended market, cost of fabrication, and the deployment. So usually, then they were thinking 2,000 equivalent gates. That's the maximum you could do. If your algorithm cannot be implemented within 2,000 equivalent gates, so basically uh, those tag cannot handle. Or the, those crypto. So this is what uh, uh, we were thinking. So anything designed should be uh, within this range. Mm -hmm. okay. And the, for the crypto uh, primitives, uh, symmetric approach, you have block cipher, stream cipher, hash, and the Mac. And the public key, then you also have public key encryption, but the union is hard to use. Most likely is the digital signature and the identification uh, schemes. However, classical crypto primitives designed for the full bridged computers might not be suitable for RFID tags, especially the EPC classes. So for the EPC class, definitely not possible. Sometimes you, 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 re, uh, you heard some or, or read some paper, they said it's for RFID, but I, I'm, I believe mean is for the NFC, so near field communication. EPC basically is not possible for the, uh, for the public key. So, so possibly is a symmetric key. Symmetric key, so uh, the, uh, the uh, net with cryptographic uh, uh, primitives, so which can perform strong authentication and the encryption for ultra low power RFID. Uh, so the, in recently four or five years, many, many work. Uh, already conducted in this area. Uh, although the, some cipher is not net weight, uh, however, they all called not net weight. 
But at least people know you, you have to have a network for RFID application. At least this is uh, uh, the signal everyone realizes you cannot use uh, the standard crypto primitives here now. Mm -hmm. So the symmetric uh, approach is the present. So the, uh, it's the block cipher, uh, which has a 64-bit block. And they also implement the uh, uh, DES. Uh, and the Katen, also Katen 10, is uh, two classes of the block cipher. And the AES also implemented uh, uh, in the optimization in area. So in the, uh, AES, you know, have the, you perform 16 S boxes, but each of them are identical. So you only need to implement one uh, inverse function, which is the 8-bit in finite field GF228. And the stream cipher, and that's a WG family that today I will introduce, so which is we proposed uh, 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 several years uh, before. And the green and the trivine and the Mickey. So this three is a, a e stream. They call the stream cipher uh, standard in the two thousand in two thousand five. Finally, they have three, uh, which they call the uh, the. I think that's the uh, uh, top three candidates. And the hummingbird uh, question? No, haven't here because this is symmetric. Yeah. Uh huh. So then hummingbird is combined design. So it's between block cipher and the uh, stream cipher. And the hash, so it's a present based or AES based. Okay. Uh, the, Basically, the standard hash function, like all of those shard classes, is not, not suitable because their hardware uh, implementation is uh, so large. And the, so those are the uh, initial attempts for using that with identification schemes uh, based on the public key uh, approach. Uh, for the general case, it's, uh, as I mentioned, not suitable. And uh, uh, the reason is hardware implementation of public key schemes usually require many tens uh, of thousands of logical gates. However, there's two types. When they implement, they think possibly is, uh, is good. So it's one is the variation of the rubbing system, or called the squash, as Shamir proposed. And another called the v, uh, v, uh, VPR. So this is the Orlin proposed. And also uh, another group in the Roy Holloway, they proposed the token-based approach using the elliptic curve. Okay, so, they, the, so, the, so this is the public key approach. Uh, although those are much bigger than what the standard requested, uh, anyway, they are in the research, they, they, they have those. And uh, I think I, I will just uh, uh, roughly uh, yeah, introduce this. So that's the privacy preserving RFID authentication protocols uh, could use block cipher, public key, and also uh, HB family. So you look at uh, how, if that's using AES, as I mentioned, AES is 128-bit. But this EPC tag only allows you sending 16-bit. So how they do, they just do the pipeline. So for example, you parallel uh, reading multiple tags. Then, then you schedule, you interleaving the, uh, the uh, trans uh, transmission time, time for each of the tag. So you see what is the bottleneck brought in here, right? Because you have to have scheduling here now, how you read to read, how you do the transmission. Because they, they try to come out uh, the, uh, the, 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 the timing. And the AES is very slow. It's, uh, this is the best implementation, it's uh, 1032 cycles bare block. Because they have 28 bit after computation, they want to use 128 bit. So that's why they're using the interleaving authentication method here. Okay. So then the so this one is based on the ECC, and the, what they try to uh, play here is try to using the exponents has very small Hamming weight. 
For example, if Hamming weight two, you just do two, uh, one multiplication. So that's what they play here. Made the reader do more, uh, do more uh, computation. I think this idea is uh, also used uh, in the wireless communication. They use the mobile phone doing very s small computation and the base station do a large computation. So this is uh, in the same line. Okay, so I will skip this one. Then I will introduce you the stream cipher WG family, also the uh, WG uh, the stream cipher based privacy preserving authentication. So the stream cipher will be different now. Okay, so I will show you. Uh, so for the uh, WG stream cipher uh, family, basically is the synchronous the stream cipher based on the Weichelgun transformation sequences, which is well studied in sequence design for communications. So those sequences basically, at the, uh, when I was in the University of Southern California, I think more than 16 years ago, then we found those sequences, but we couldn't prove that. It ended up with two people, uh, Hans Dalberton, from uh, during that time, he was he passed away about four years ago, right? But uh, uh, during that time, he w he was working with the German security agency. Another guy is John Dean, working with the National Security Agency of of U.S. government. So they two proved uh, this uh, uh, sec those sequences has a two level auto correlation. We only found by computer search. We couldn't prove, but they too proved that. So those uh, key stream process the cryptographic properties of WG sequences. And uh, later on, we, can, we figured out we could also uh, output multiple bits instead of one bit. So that's another class is the uh, uh, multiple output uh, WG. So the, uh, the stream cipher basically they based on the uh, what argument Shannon did in the 1949. Shannon said that the one time pad is unbreakable. What is that one time pad? Which means that every time you you do the encryption, you will use different key stream. Then that's the one time pad. Then he proved he said that it's the unbreakable uh, if you can do this. Okay. Then, uh, in general, in the design of the stream cipher, then you, you divide it into the two phases. One, at first phase is the key initialization algorithm. So, then for the key initialization algorithm, you will have two input. One is IV, another is the key. Then you run multiple times. Uh, so, goal of the KIA is to scramble key bits with IV in order to get the bit stream as random as possible. Then after that, you put this as the, as the internal state of the should random sequence generator, then this is where out bit. So this bit exclusive or with the message bit, you get the ciphertext bit, okay? So for the decryption, then you do the same, then you, uh, but this key stream bit will exclusive or with the ciphertext, then you recovered your message bit. Okay, so this is the stream cipher mode. And the, what is the function used in the WG, WG stream cipher uh, family? So basically we need the linear feedback shift register. So those uh, uh, LFSR sequences is not uh, work on the binary field, instead is in the extension field. So usually this extension field is the power of the two. So we take the polynomial, which is a primitive uh, polynomial over this extension field. Then we generate the linear recursive uh, sequences uh, called the uh, AT. So it's generated by this uh, linear recursive uh, relation. So the sequence generated by primitive polynomial has a period which is the maximum Q to the n minus one. So this is uh, those uh, LFSR. Then what is the WG permutation and the WG transform? So then we, we write that the HX has the five term. Then WG permutation, basically we do the transform X plus one. 
then you get this is a permutation. Then you add in the trace, for example, here is m bit, you map to one bit, we call the WG transform. So this four exponents looks like this. It's a little bit magic. Basically, this is what we found by computer search. Uh -huh. Then later on, Hans Dobbit and John Dillon proved that. Okay, so this is, uh, we call this one is uh, uh, the Weichel Gong transformation from finite field GF2 to M to GF2, and this one is the permutation. Then we can generate the uh, two sequences uh, when we evaluate a WG transform over a uh, primitive element. Then we get the two sequences. And the both sequences has ideal two-level autocorrelation, so which means uh, uh, they are uh, so uh, ideal two-level correlation. What is the correlation? Is you measure the uh, similarity between the sequences and its shifted version. So ideal two-level is whatever which shift, they have the same correlation value. So uh, which means they are not giving out any information. Okay, so this is a general WG generator. So you have LFSR over extension field, then you apply the WG transform at the last stage. If that's the initialization phase, then this is the feedback. Uh, after finish the initialization, then you output the key stream. So this is the general uh, block for the WG generator, and the M is the size for each entry, M bit. L is how many M bit, M -bit block, okay? So then uh, uh, this is how you update in key initialization phase, and this is will be feedback. Or, uh, if not uh, in the uh, running phase, then uh, output from WG function not feedback. Okay, so this is the uh, architecture of the WG. And the WG uh, stream cipher has all of the designed uh, randomness property. For example, we can uh, show the period is uh, two to the n minus one. So n is m times l. And also the uh, k stream bit is balanced and has a two level auto correlation function. And if you look at the t tuple, so which means t bit together, and this is uh, uh, they appear equally likely. Okay, so the t uh, less than l, and the linear span. Uh, what is the linear span? Is you can uh, using the Bernanke mass algorithm, then you can uh, f given the key stream bit, uh, you can find the LFSR which generates uh, this key stream. So what's that the length of the LFSR, which defined as a linear span? So this linear span is exponentially increased with the M. Also can be determined uh, exactly. And uh, also the cryptographic properties of WG transform has all of those good properties. It is a one order resilient, and the algebraic degree is the one third, and the nonlinear rarity also can be determined. And the additive correlation basically is uh, uh, prevent the uh, differential crypto analysis because you look at the correlation between this and this. Then this is also uh, very good. So that's why WG uh, stream cipher process all of the desired uh, randomness uh, property. And this is the hardware uh, implementation uh, architecture. I think I will skip. And uh, for the future of the WG stream cipher, it has guaranteed the key stream randomness properties and uh, also secure against uh, time memory data trade-off attack, algebraic coordination attacks, also many new attacks like the cube attack. Uh, we also give analysis. Um, and, uh, and the most important thing can be implemented in hardware with no complexity for some parameters. Not all, but we can pick up some. For example, as an instance, I think I will skip this one. So this is what is a good coordination property which WG has can provided 
certain uh, countermeasure for different uh, attacks, like the temporal resistance and the side chain attacks. Uh, uh, those can be provided by the good correlation property of the WG. So I, I think I will skip this one. Now I will give you the example question. Non-linear, you've got to do temporary. So temporary resistance is coming in and uh, with a soldering iron and looking uh, at the bit pieces. So uh, yeah. why does the property of the algorithm matter? Yes, because you, uh, for example, that if correlation is good, then your pore spectrum is flat. Mm -hmm. So you do not know that uh, your device is doing things or not. So that's why you cannot temper, because you, are, you, you do not realize they are doing things or not. Yeah, in this sense. Okay, so then this is the WG8, so which has, we use the 80-bit key and the 80-bit uh, initial vector. So the LFSR has 20 stages, and the finite field is uh, uh, GF228. Okay, so then this is the uh, architecture. 28 stages over GF228. Then this is WG8 here, but we add in the one more function, which is the, uh, we call the uh, uh, decimation is uh, uh, to the power of the x, so this into the power 19. Then those, uh, those equations are identical as for general, uh, general WG. Mm -hmm. Then, so, so for the initialization, basically, then we need uh, uh, feedback from here, so uh, before the trace. And uh, for the running phase, uh, then the 8-bit map to 1-bit by adding the trace function. Okay, so this is the uh, WG uh, function uh, for the uh, parameter uh, 8 case. Then for this, uh, what is the period? Then we get the period uh, to, to 160 uh, minus one. And the key stream is uh, balanced uh, and the, because they in inherited all properties of the uh, WG family. The linear span is about 2 to 33.32. Uh, uh, so what's that mean? So you need uh, to know this many bit to re reconstruct the rest of a bit. However, this is RFID application, you never have this many bit uh, to be uh, collected. Okay, then we also did the crypto analysis for all known uh, crypto uh, uh, attacks, like the algebraic attack, correlation attack, differential attack, cube attack, and uh, the distinguish attack, uh, discrete free transform attack, and the time memory trade-off attack. So we, we did a thorough analysis for different uh, attacks for WG8. Uh, th those part we have to do because your parameter is small now. So th those cannot inherit it from the general WG uh, stream cipher. Then this is our implementation. So that's uh, also the comparisons. Uh, I think uh, at first we implemented the WG7, so today I give you is WG8. Then, because WG7 we implemented as a two, uh, 2010, uh, and which use a different method, so this year we did much, much better. So those performance uh, uh, for the throughput usually is two to 15 times higher than the all known uh, lightweight uh, crypto ciphers. And the uh, energy consumption is two to 220 times smaller. So for this uh, WG8 uh, implementation, okay. So if you're interested, so we, we have the full paper in the CACR uh, technical report. Yeah, so that's on the website, uh, you can uh, access that. Okay, and the, for, then we can use the, uh, as the uh, privacy uh, per, uh, preserving authentication now. So how we do this is a stream cipher now. So your reader first gets the 80-bit uh, IV, could be, uh, or could be the random number. Then this, this tag has a, his SSID, then we, I just write as the TI. And the, when the reader query the tag, 
and he sent this information, then the tech will choose a uh, 80-bit IV2, and the C1 is the TI plus IV2. Okay, so IV2 is like the masking, although it's not the key stream. So now we, we solve this is as the IV, this is as a key into the WG stream cipher. Then we run WG stream cipher, then we get C2. So C2 home, because WG output one bit. In the RFID application, you need a 16 bit. So that's why we get 16 bit. So this is, you can get as many as bit you wish, unlike the block cipher. Then if you get output 128 bit, then you have to throw out the other 94 bit because you only need a 16 bit. Okay, so now uh, the privacy preserving, what's that mean? So the reader, Basically, he does not know which, it, which tag response, response. So he will search for the key. So he search, once he get match, he knows this key is belong to this tag. Then he will be convinced that this tag is being uh, identified. Okay. Then the following, to, uh, then it's mutual authentication. Then you can continue to, uh, uh, to run the... Okay, so then, then they continue to do the authentication. So because this is a stream cipher, so we keep the internal state not changing. Not every time you were running the initialization phase. So every time you continue your process and get your 16-bit output. So then your tag will be uh, authenticated. Also, the reader also be authenticated if you do the mutual authentication. Then the last step, then the, uh, the, uh, the command execution. So this is also specified in the standard. Then we also continue to run the WG stream cipher. Then, then uh, uh, the, the all of the uh, com command can be secure. So we have implemented the protocol on the 4-bit and 8-bit microprocessors. And the uh, database, we use the laptop. In fact, this is a very old one. Uh -huh. And the, the, for both WG7 and WG8. And the, uh, the protocol is meet the time constraint for EPC tag. And for the server, basically, it could be much faster because we use this syncing pad. Uh, that's my student because he just uses his own laptop as a server. So we, we execute our protocol could be executed less than three milliseconds when the uh, tag population is uh, 104. And in the standard request, you can uh, execute uh, uh, for the uh, 103 tags per second. But we have that three minutes we can, we can uh, authenticate uh, 104 tags. So uh, then we also implemented using the uh, tag uh, which is provided by the Intel. Also the reader we using the software defined radio. So, it's, uh, so this is a tag because the commercial tag cannot, be, uh, cannot do the programming. So this is the Inter's uh, uh, research lab. They have those testing tag. So they uh, provided to us that this is a software defined radio. So we can uh, easily change the frequencies. So this is a server as a reader. So that's what uh, our uh, timing uh, we got there. Uh -huh. So this is the uh, I will conclude uh, uh, what uh, I introduced. So this uh, RFID is uh, one of the most prom promising technology in the field of ubiquitous and uh, pervasive computing. And the EPC standard uh, has put forward the challenge for design security mechanism for RFID systems. Okay, we were thinking the lightweight uh, crypto algorithm and protocol are crucial for the RFID. And the WG family is granted, uh, guaranteed randomness property and provides a wide spectrum and, uh, of possible levels of trade-off between security area and uh, optimality in hardware implementation. So I think uh, I, uh, the, 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 this is references uh, so that uh, the WG material I took from those uh, papers, all published. You can download from our website. Uh, 
And also we did a lot of work on the RFID security, not using crypto, we also using the physical layer security to secure the RFID, like those work, we using the frequency hopping. And we also found some new attack we call the active eavesdropping. Not passive, it's active. So in order to uh, eavesdropping, you first need to send out something. So that's why we call the active. So those are physical layer approach, not the crypto approach. Uh -huh. And also if, uh, uh, yeah, so that, that's our uh, research is supported by uh, NSERC, also many companies. And uh, also, uh, also this is the different research activities conducted in the, uh, in the communication security lab. So this is part of the Center of Applied Cryptographic Research uh, in Waterloo. I think uh, I will stop here now, yeah. I, I don't know how many minutes I should give the talk, but anyway, <laughs> okay, I stop here now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions? So, can the tags generate random numbers? Like right now, no. Okay. Right now, so so uh, like we we did one work. We uh, said the net with should a random number generator for for the EPC uh, tag. So they cannot, okay. they cannot currently. So uh, the uh, but um, a lot of research. Uh, uh, happen here, they said you use truly random uh, generator, but you do not have. Because truly random uh, number generator uh, will comes from the uh, uh, powerful, physically unknowable function. But that one is very, very expensive. So EPC tech cannot do that. Yeah, but how you can get the random bit, that's, I, I believe, very challenging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, does this cost one cent? Much more, more than. More than one Much cent. more. So that's why I, I told them no, I cannot do. Okay. If you, uh, you know, you have you they scheduled basically ten percent resource for security. Mm -hmm. I think it's too little, right? Too little. Ten percent of resource should have at least twenty percent of the entire. So the, here we're talking about the entire system now. Your entire system cost is one, they should give the security 20%. Otherwise, you cannot do. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I don't know what you guys think. <laughs> you think you can do 10% <laughs> of the resource? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Okay, let's thank Wong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.